Hello everyone. Now I feel that the most recent lectures we've covered in this course have been a little West European centred, so in the next few we're going to mix things up a little and look at a part of the continent that we haven't covered as much yet, Southeast Europe. Today we will be looking at the story of the Serbian Revolution and Serbian independence. There had been numerous independent Serbian states in medieval Europe, Indeed, there had been a princedom, a kingdom, and even a Serbian empire. The period of Serbian independence ended as a result of the centuries-long conflict with the Turkish Ottoman Empire. The 1389 Battle of Kosovo Field has gone down in Serbian legend and is a very important event for modern Serbian identity. In this battle, the Serbs managed to kill the Ottoman Sultan, but lost their prince and so many soldiers that the Serbian state was greatly weakened. Less than a century after the battle, most Serbs found themselves living under Ottoman rule. Unlike their Bosnian neighbours, however, the Serbs never converted to Islam en masse and largely retained their Christian faith. Serbia lay on the frontiers of the Ottoman Empire, with the border between the Ottoman and the Habsburg lands in the 18th century being on the Danube and the Sava rivers. On the Habsburg side of the river lay the so-called military frontier, which was settled by many Serbs. At a confluence of the two rivers lay the fortress city of Belgrade, or White Fortress, which both Habsburg and Ottoman armies constantly warred over. Command of the city switched between both sides constantly, and, throughout its history, Belgrade has been destroyed and rebuilt an incredible 40 times. Because Serbs lived in both the Habsburg and the Ottoman lands on either side of the two rivers, it was easy for new ideas to transfer from Western Europe to Vienna and then on to Serbia. Many Serbian aristocrats and church figures read widely on topics of philosophy and religious reform. Voltaire and Montesquieu were both popular among the ranks of the educated Serbian elite. The Serbs living in the Habsburg Empire were given a good deal of autonomy. This autonomy was granted to Serbs living further south during a brief occupation of most of Serbia by Habsburg forces in the first half of the 18th century. Habsburg reforms in the period of their rule facilitated the growth of a Serbian middle class, and when Ottoman rule was restored, thousands of Serbs fled northwards into the military frontier. Memories of the period of autonomy remained. The Serbs petitioned the Ottoman Sultan, asking him for more reforms, but the Ottoman government did the opposite, further centralising its power. Serbia, whose population had greatly expanded in the 18th century, was now an important province in the empire. Belgrade alone had a population of 100,000, making it the empire's second largest city after Istanbul. As it was a frontline province, Serbia was placed under the command of the Janissaries, who were hated by the local people for the excesses of their rule. In 1801, the Janissaries, after a series of confrontations with the Ottoman governor, or vizier, murdered him and began ruling the province themselves, independent of Istanbul. They imposed a vicious rule over the Serbs, in which all autonomy was stripped away, taxes were raised, and forced labour was introduced. Many Serbs fled to the mountains and forests in order to be free of this arbitrary leadership, particularly those who had been stripped of their lands by the Janissaries. The rebellious Janissaries feared that the Serbs had been secretly messaging Istanbul to ask for aid, and so, in January 1804, they assassinated 72 members of the Serbian nobility. The heads of these unfortunate aristocrats were placed on pikes in town squares throughout the land. Leading, leading Serb chieftains then gathered in a small village for the so-called Orashak Assembly 
at which they agreed to launch an uprising. The livestock merchant, George Petrovich, nicknamed Black George, was chosen as the Serb's leader. Black George had considerable military experience, he was a veteran of the Austro-Turkish War, and had also been a member of numerous militia forces. The rebels, aided by a small detachment of Ottoman cavalry sent to aid them by the uh, Sultan, retook Belgrade in July 1804. In 1805, an assembly was summoned, and it submitted a list of proposals to the Sultan. At this point, what had, be what had begun as a peasant uprising had transformed into a nationalist movement. The assembly held its meetings in Smederevo, the ancient capital of the Serbian Empire, under the portrait of the medieval emperor Stefan Dušan. Black George described himself as a Serbian commander, and the Russians and the Austrians as potential saviours of our nation. His letters to the great powers of Europe were signed in the name of the whole Serbian nation. The proposals to the Sultan included a number of demands for local economy that were unacceptable to Istanbul, and a large force was dispatched to quell the Serbs' rebellion. In the following years, the rebels succeeded in defeating the Ottoman army in a series of battles, despite being heavily outnumbered and outgunned. In 1806, the rebels had grown confident enough to announce the emancipation of all serfs in their lands, and abolished all feudal dues to the, overlord, to the landlords. Another victory against the odds over Ottoman forces came in Delegrad in December 1806. This ensured that the war morphed into one for complete independence from Istanbul. Serbian victories were, however, often followed with horrific massacres of Muslims, whether Turks or converted Serbs. Mosques were also destroyed in great numbers. In 1807, Belgrade was made the capital of the new revolutionary Serbian state. Serbs, following the Orthodox, Serbs sorry, followed the Orthodox branch of Christianity, so instead of appealing to Rome or Western Europe to help them in their struggle, the revolutionaries instead turned to Russia. The Russians responded by sending an expeditionary force and declaring war on the Ottoman Empire. In 1809, Black George is issued the Proclamation in Belgrade, which guaranteed freedom of religion and codified the rule of law. Soon after, his forces were finally defeated in battle by the Ottomans at Sigar. Facing defeat, the Serbs killed themselves by blowing up their store of gunpowder. The Ottomans exhumed the corpses and collected the skulls of the dead men into a tower which still stands in Serbia today. After this, the Russian troops were forced to withdraw due to Napoleon's invasion, and the Tsar signed a peace agreement with the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire exploited these circumstances and reconquered Serbia in 1813 after Be retaking Belgrade. The Ottoman forces burned down villages among, along the main invading routes whilst their inhabitants were massacred or made refugees, with many women and children being enslaved. In one day alone, in Belgrade, almost 2,000 women and children were sold as slaves. Black George, along with other rebel leaders, fled to Russia. Public impaling was re-established as a punishment method for Serbs, who showed any desire to rebel. Such were the excesses of Ottoman rule after the reconquest that a second uprising broke out soon after, in 1815. In a series of battles in which they were once more outnumbered, the Serbs drove the Ottoman forces from the area under the command of Miłosz Obrenovich. The Ottomans decided to cut their losses and effectively made Serbia an independent state the Principality of Serbia, albeit one that had to pay taxes to Istanbul and have a detachment of Ottoman troops stationed on its soil. Obrenovic was made Serbia's first prince 
and his leadership was strengthened when Black George was assassinated upon his return in 1817. The Serbian uprising can be considered a revolution in that Serbian society was greatly transformed by the events of the time. The middle class, who saw nationhood in a different way than the peasantry had done, had achieved a position of prominence in the new country as leaders of the revolution. Another consequence of the wars was the extension and deepening of channels of communication between Serbs living in Serbia and those living in the diaspora. The latter had prospered as traders, lawyers, accountants and soldiers, and in several cases had been accepted into the ranks of the nobility. A substantial Serb population thus thrived in the areas that were not subject to Ottoman rule, and this diasporic class played a crucial role in the growth of a Serb national consciousness. Despite having achieved effective independence, many Serbian figures wanted more from their country and longed for the day when all Serbs around Southeast Europe would be united under Belgrade's rule. A foreign born Serb, Ilya Garashanin, became Serbia's Minister of the Interior in 1843, and in 1844 he prepared a memoranda outlining the principles upon which he believed the foreign policy of the state should be based. In this document, known as the Draft Plan, Garasanin argued that the primary impediment to Serbian growth was its relationship with Austria, as the Habsburgs had a stranglehold on Serbian trade and exports. But even more important were the political goals of uniting all the Serbs and recreating the borders of the medieval Serbian Empire, making Ottoman control of nearby Bosnia and Kosovo a substantial obstacle. It was the trends outlined in the draft plan that would grow and develop into modern Serbian nationalism over the course of the following century. Serbian politics after independence was defined by the rivalry between the ruling Obrenovic dynasty and the heirs of Black George in the so-called Karadžić dynasty, who argued that he had been murdered. The Abrenoviches wished further co cooperation with Austria, while the Karadžić looked to Russia for support. Meanwhile, a Serbian urban elite, mostly in Belgrade, began to assert its dominance over the small peasants in the countryside. Many Serbs saw their country as being little more than an agricultural client state for the Austrians, and anger towards the Abrenovic dynasty rose. Assassinations and palace coups became common, whilst the growth of a parliamentary system was stunted. Full independence was achieved from the Ottoman Empire in the late 1860s. Soon after, an uprising in Ottoman Bosnia saw Serbia enter in a war against the Ottomans, earning the Abrenovic ruler, Milan, a great deal of prestige when his country emerged victorious and gained new lands. In 1822, Milan was declared King of Serbia as Milan I. Some voices grumbled, however. Whilst Serbia had gained lands, the hated Austrians, now the Austro-Hungarians, had established a protectorate over Bosnia. Growing Serbian nationalism would lead to the overthrow of the Abrenoviches, the return of the Karadžić, the death of an archduke, and the eruption of a world war. All this, however, remained in the future, and we will cover it later on in the course. <laughs>